Okay, so I'm back playing, and this is, whoop, where's the camera? There it is. This is Catalyst and Company, Catalyst and Company, where we're catalysts in each other's lives as well as our own, and we continue to work at being the artists we've always wanted to be. Behind me is uh, a rather large version of Frida Kahlo. As I've talked about, uh, as I've talked about, I've been trying in different videos, um, I've been working towards getting murals, getting mural work. Uh, the city actually uh, uh, talked to me about doing one in particular. I've done a ton of work for it. I've posted about it. And now we're really just on hold. Uh, we've been on hold for over a month, I think five weeks now, while we wait for the client to okay or not okay or to communicate in some way. And it, so in the meantime, I've been readjusting or redoing the image and trying to find a pattern that I can then use in other mural designs, a pattern I can work with and colors and ideas and things. So I think I've landed on it here in, in the Freedom Mural, but as you can see, she's still wonky. We, we go through this every time. This isn't a surprise. It happens every single time. But I'm looking at it as a mural, mirror image in the video. And so I can see a little bit clearer what needs to be done. Like her mouth needs to be lifted a bit. It needs to be pulled in just a bit. I know this is very far out. Uh, so I think, you know, again, I've, I've talked about it before, is using a mirror image to see, see the work and see the balance uh, clearer than just head on. I also talk about moving the, the uh, canvas normally around up and down all you know all over the room sideways upside down so you can really find the balance I can't do it here because this particular sheet of paper that I'm painting on is uh, nine feet by nine feet the actual image that I'm working on is somewhere around eight feet maybe a little bit bigger I don't know it's somewhere around nine feet by nine feet so it's a little too big for me to move on to any other wall. In fact, I can't believe how dwarfed I am compared to Frida. Now she is, and again, I'm looking, when I look at her from here, I can see other issues. So I'm just making notes with a piece of chalk so I can go back later and see it again, review it again, review my, my notes um, like you would in an essay. Uh, this morning, or last night rather, on this, I've been working on her face, but I needed to move out. So I filled in the background a little bit further than I had in the past day. I've only been working on this for two or three days, really. But I filled out the background a little bit further yesterday and started working on the roses. But last night when I was doing the roses, they looked completely different. They weren't quite as red. There was more of the uh, this cream color I've been using as a base was showing through with some red. I put in blue lines outlining the petals. And then I'm, I thought I was going to be able to circumvent a lot of work by adding this cream color to red acrylic and just doing highlights on the petals. I knew it was wrong. Now I'm looking at something else that's driving me nuts. I knew it was wrong, but I went ahead and tried it because it doesn't really matter. It's, it's all fixable. It's all fixable. One of my rules. So I went to bed last night, woke up this morning and went, don't be a lazy ass. Work out the dark areas first and then go back with the highlights. There is no circumventing. There's no, you know, uh, a quick way to get through the marathon. You just have to run the entire thing and run it correctly. So I did mix uh, uh, an acrylic red with um, black gesso, got a darker color. It's not something I would ever do with oils, mix black with a, with a lighter color, because to me that is cheating. But with acrylics, sometimes that's what you have to do. So I went over the darker edges of the petals using this mixture. Then I mixed it with water, lightened it up a little bit, and started just sketching in lines and shapes. And then later, once these are a little bit more filled out, I'll go in and highlight. Oh my God, her eye is driving me crazy. I think this one is a little, I, I've known it for 
the last couple days. She may be too far out and I can't fudge it. Oh well, we'll see. So anyway, that's that's what's hanging up in back of me. Um, I've moved on from doing the Highwaymen to doing Frida again because I want to put together a presentation package and hit the streets once again. I've already applied to two large hotels in Sarasota. They both fell off, or I fell off their radar, whatever. So I'm going to, I've been working on the images, making fresher images. We'll print them up. I'll put them in a presentation package. I have another image over there that I'm working on on another wall that will go into the presentation package as well. I'm going to find a graphic designer who can help me put together design specific to those sites. And then we'll just see what happens. But one door hasn't closed. It, it hasn't opened all the way. It hasn't closed. So I'll go to door number two and try again. And we'll go back to John Sims and rework him now that I have the color palette that I really most enjoy, which is blues and teals. You know, when I'm doing portraits, blues and teals, blues and teals. I have no idea why I decided everything had to be bright and colorful with John. But I lost my nut and that's what I did. So we're finding the pattern and now we're just going to keep repeating it. I'm also thinking about uh, a, a mural that I'm interested in doing for a theater called the Players Theater. And the Players Theater is a small, it's a small theater. They're currently housed in a mall up the street in a pretty dead nobody goes there mall. But they have a new theater opening downtown in a very busy park. And so I, I want to approach them about doing a mural of Paul Rubens. Paul Rubens, Pee Wee Herman, that's where he started his career, was at the Players Theater. Excuse me for a second. So that's another one that I want to work on. There are multiple projects always that I want to be doing. But instead of focusing on like, highwaymen, we're going to drive that nail into the ground or that we're going to keep beating that dead horse. It's keep moving, keep moving and rethinking the ideas and rethinking the designs. Uh, now something, something kind of biggish happened this week with me. I've, I've applied to many venues. I've applied to for grants. I've applied for all kinds of things and I never win a thing. I never win anything. I, I just don't. Uh, I don't. In fact, I met with, I saw the museum director, the Sarasota Art Museum director, and she was asked me if I had applied to the Skyway Bridge, which is a, a, a way to get artists into museums. And I said, yeah. Yeah. And she said, well, didn't they accept you? And I said, no, no, no. Virginia, I, I'm, I'm not someone who is, um, or whose work is accepted. I'm not socially connected. I don't care about being socially connected. And she said, that's a problem. And I go, yeah, I know, but it should be about the work. Not about who you know. And she said, well, I'm going to review what you sent in and your portfolio and look at your website and uh, I'll try and get an answer as to why they said no. I haven't heard back from her. Uh, she seemed genuine that she would do this. And, nah. So I'm not used to people being like, yeah, except for us, you know, except for people on Facebook and Instagram and in YouTube um, and other social media. I'm not used to people being like, yeah. People who could step in and say, come on, let's go, let's go. We've got big things ahead. I've got a number of things up in the air, and they're, but they're all just like, well, you know. So I'm going out for sushi. I, I have no idea. People, people are deeply ambivalent, and it's been frustrating. However, until this week. However, and until this week. This week... Uh, I actually applied to a fellowship about two months ago. It's a local fellowship. And I thought, I'm just gonna throw spaghetti at the wall. I filled out the application. I called my friend Rose and I go, Rose, I don't do well on these things. And I don't know what to say that's gonna make them go, yes, 
because people don't go, yes. People with power and nice, they don't go, yes. They go, my grandchild paints, my daughter paints, my son paints, my cousin paints, you know, my kindergarten school child enjoys finger painting. This, you know. But this week I was notified that I not only won, but I won the top prize. Um, I, I don't know how many winners are in that category, but I won the, t the top fellowship that they, um, that they allow. As I said, I called my friend Rose when I was filling out the application and she goes back, just say F it, throw spaghetti at the wall and just say, speak from your heart. So I wrote, when I was filling out my application, I said, I, I, I don't win anything. I don't win things. So I basically said, I kind of don't care. I'm just trying. I'm just going to throw spaghetti at the wall and see what happens. I also explained in the, because uh, I was like, ugh, I've been turned down so many times. It's like, Ugh. So um, in the application, I also wrote, I'm sure that you want me to focus on one thing. I am an artist and I'm doing, or an artist, and I'm doing this one thing and this one project and I want funding for this one thing. But I did say in the application, I have 50 projects going on with 50 different people. This is just how I operate. I'm constantly juggling and doing, doing different things. And they actually saw it. These people I, I've never met before actually saw it. They saw me, they saw the artwork. They actually did go to my website and look through things. They actually did go to my social media and look at things. And they see that I'm just constantly producing, constantly producing work. But I won. And I'm trying to let it sink in. It's hard when you're used to being the underdog to go, oh, I'm on my way to being an insider in a place that has never noticed me before. It's a little weird. It's a little very lot weird. And so I have my notes, all the things that I want to do with the money that they're giving me. Uh, but I also asked, because I'm pretty organized about what I want to do, where I want to be. Uh, and uh, now, I, now I'll have a small budget to work with. But I'm sitting down with the chair of this one organization next week to kind of go over things. And tonight I have a phone call with... Uh, a, a fairly pretty famous uh, portrait artist who's on this board as well. Uh, I met her at an auction where I'd done a portrait of her, not be, so I could be like bestie pals with her, but because she's part of this organization, this organization was having an auction. I said, let me do a portrait of this woman and give you a Frida Kahlo and let's see what happens. Neither made top bid or came close. But we did our best, and I met this woman, Gail, and tonight we're having a phone call where I get to pick her, her brain. Where I get to, she's going to kill me again. My ride is coming. We're headed to a gallery. Uh, but I get to pick her brain, and I'm excited about this because she she's nationally known. She's like a kind of a big deal. Bigish. She's a bigish, big deal. Bigger than me. Big fish. Bigger fish. Uh, so I'm hoping we can build connections. She's alluded to the fact that she wants to help me. She's alluded to the fact that she's doing something for me. I don't know what it is, but it's just such a relief to be able to share with you something's going right. Something's going right. And this is hopefully the start of bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger things. So thank you for hanging in with me for the past 11 years, if you've been here that long. Um, well, it's just gone from yippee-dee-doo to, to all over the place. Fingers crossed, we're on our way. And hopefully, um, 
we'll be on our way with murals too because I'm going to keep doing this until I get one. I'm just going to keep making work and putting out these proposals and talking to people until I get one. Once we get one, we get another one, we get a third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and we just keep going. That's the goal. I don't like to regulate myself to one project, to one idea. Can't work that way. So we're going to go big. All right, ready, Carrie? I'm glad you're doing well. I'm glad you got your eye surgery and hopefully you can see a little bit better. And there we are. All right, I'm Beck Lane. If you'd like to uh, help support Catalyst and Company, all the links are down below because that money doesn't come in until the 7th uh, of March. I go to an awards, awards ceremony at a fancy little place on the 7th and that's when um, they hand out the awards. But if you'd like to help support Catalyst and Company in the meantime, all the links are down below. But if you're also, if you're interested in original work, uh, the my website link should be down below, as well as uh, the contact info for my galleries. Ooh, I just want to mention one more thing before we close out. Carrie, pay attention. Um, we've had a friend of this channel for a long time. His name is Tom, and Tom recently uh, did a an autobiograph autobiographical uh, document and a documentary an autobiographical documentary I'm going to put the link to it down below it is absolutely phenomenal uh, the last minute of it had me tearing up it's beautiful it's funny it's heartbreaking you can feel it in your soul you can feel his excitement and uh, and the pleasure he's gotten from his career, as well as some of the heartbreak in, in his documentary. But the last few lines will just leave you hollowed. Or in the most beautiful, empathetic way, hollowed. Good job, Tom, really. good. It's beautiful. So anyway, I'll have the link for that down below as well. I've got to get back to my friend who's supposed to be picking me up. Whoops. All right, we'll go balance out Frida later. All right, ready? Here we go. Ciao. Meow. Meow. Ciao. Meow. Meow. Boink.